Now the fifth reason, of course, is also that children can be born again. They can be, be born from above. God can come and change their lives. Oh, it gives us such a hope to know that children can be born again. And children are ready to receive the Savior. As we looked at Matthew 18, verse 3 and 4, they, they, they've got this natural knowledge that there is a God. And they need, they need a Savior. Charles Spurgeon, the famous English preacher of the 1800s, stated, a child of five, if proper, properly instructed, can as truly believe and be regenerated as an adult. My conviction is that our converts from among children are among the best that we have. I should, should judge them to have been more numerous, genuine than any other class, more constant, and in the long run, more solid. A child of five, if properly instructed, can as truly believe and be regenerated as an adult. Now, our, uh, the person that started CEF now about 83 years ago, uh, Mr. O, he was in a church that didn't believe that children could believe in Jesus Christ, that they can be, be born again. Only about at the age of 18. And he read this quote about what Spurgeon said. And he thought, no, this can't be true. But Mr. O went and decided he's going to make like an experiment. And he went out and he spoke to two sisters that was in his, uh, in his church. They were about eight, nine years old, if I remember right. And... And, and they accepted Jesus Christ. And a few weeks later, their mother came to church, who was never, never came to church previously. And Mr. O asked their mother, But why are you coming now to church? And she said, I want what my two daughters have. She saw the change. She saw that they were born again. They were different. And, they, and she wanted what her daughters had. So just Spurgeon says, a child of God, five, can be born again. So because children have open and, and ready hearts, children are naturally humble and teachable and trusting. And as children grow, the, the young, impressionable hearts may be hardened to the things of the Lord and His Word. Especially things that they are being taught these days at school that also contradicts uh, what, what they are taught in the Bible and also things that they learn at school uh, or on television from their, their parents or their friends. Children are more likely to have many years to serve the Lord. Because if they, if they turn to, to, uh, to Jesus Christ when they are still young, they've got so many years and years to serve Jesus Christ. And also if they turn to Jesus Christ when they are young, they can know this peace and, and, and they can can know that the God Jesus is love for them and, and help them through many so many difficulties in their lives that they're gonna face when as they grow older. And many preachers and evangelists were saved as children. Stephen Oxford, uh, Stephen Alford, sorry, Christian speaker wrote, I believe in child evangelism. For three reasons. First, because I was born again when I was only seven. Second, because the history of general evangelism shows that by far the greatest proportion of conversions take place before age 20. 
and third because the Bible makes it plain that youth is the time to turn to God. Ecclesiastes 12 verse 1. Remember your maker in your youth. And many famous Christians uh, were saved as children. Um, Henrietta Mears, a Bible teacher and writer, Ruth Graham, Corey Ten Boom, and, and Evangelist Lighten Ford all received Christ at age five. If all the facts were revealed, we should probably be astounded at the number of prominent Christians who were saved as children. And I also know of of people that said that they came to Christ at the age of four, that they made the decision they wanted to follow Jesus Christ. But remember, the Holy Spirit is the one who convicts the child of sin and causes the, him to be ready to accept Christ as Savior. And that's a good thing. Some, sometimes I, I feel like I would like just like to take the child and shake him and say, now turn and, and become, follow Jesus Christ. But I realize it's a good thing that I can't, I can't change the children because I'm sure if I would change the children, I will make a mess of it. So it's better that Jesus Christ and, and the Holy Spirit will work in their lives and change them and bring the best out of them. And children, of course, is depends on adults like you and me to show them the way. They are dependent on us to show them the way. And the last reason is because the children is the future of our nation. The children is the future of our nation. And God warns that if children are not taught, future generations will stop following his word. So we must reach out and we must, we must tell them about Jesus. Specifically in Psalm 78, read verses 1 to 8, but I'll, I'll just want to read verses 7 and 8. So Psalm 78 verses 1 to 8. If you can read that for me please. But specifically I'm going to read verses 7 and 8. That they, that is the children, should put their confidence in God and not forget the works of God but keep His commandments and not be like their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation a generation that did not prepare uh, its heart and whose spirit was not faithful to God. I've heard, a while back I heard the statistics of South Africa and, and how many people are still going to church. And, and most, they, they said about 75 to 80 percent of South Africans don't go to church anymore. I couldn't believe it, but as we look at our, our uh, country and what's happening in our country, then we can start seeing that people had turned their backs on Jesus, had turned their backs on God. And that's why we must reach out to these children in South Africa. As, as verse 8 here says of, of, of Psalm 78, so that they will not be like their fathers and their parents or their grandparents, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that did not prepare its heart and whose spirit was not faithful to God. Because we want to see the children that they won't be like their parents, their grandparents their uncles and their aunts, that they will be different, that they will reach out and that they will grow in their knowledge of Jesus Christ. And if you win a child for Christ, you have saved an entire life. And they can be fruitful for their whole life. But if you've saved a an adult, 
maybe it will just happen that you have only saved a soul because they maybe won't have so much long time to live. So now is the time to reach out to children. Now is the time to reach out to children. At this beginning of this session we spoke about children. We said that they are cute, especially when they, they do and say things that, that uh, makes you laugh. They also don't understand spiritual things. So we looked at several reasons, the six reasons, why we must evangelize children. The most important reason is that God's words say that we must evangelize Him and God wants us to reach out to them. So now is the time to reach them before it's too late. I pray that God's love for you and the children will encourage you to go to teach and to reach the children around you for Christ. Are you willing to be used by God to evangelize boys and girls? Are you willing to be used by God to evangelize boys and girls? As I pray, will you commit yourself to going and teaching God's most important message to the children where you live? Let us pray. Father, thank you for this time that we were together. Thank you that we, we've got authority, your, the word, and you say that you love children, that you care about children, and you want us to reach out to children. So please give us the courage, the strength, the discipline, and the love for the children. But more and more, Jesus, give us love for you, so that your love will compel us to go out to reach the children, the lost. For you, Jesus, we ask this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen.